Jonas Wilson here. Today, let's talk about finding the double integral by reversing the order integration. The reason for why we want to reverse the order integration, uh, just like my other videos, is that when we integrate with respect to x, this function here, there is no elementary into derivative. So um, we want to try to switch the order so that we can integrate with respect to y first and see if we're getting a new function that we can integrate. Okay, so first we are going to start by writing out the limits for the two integrals. And then you may say those limits are already there. Why do we bother doing this? It's really because we can actually just rewrite the limits as, uh, because for the outer integral, it's those are the limits for the y, right? So we can, y, we can write y equals zero and then y equals pi. And then for the inner integral, we have the limits for the x. So we get x equals y and then x equals pi. By just writing this out, it makes it easier for us to figure out what the region looks like. And um, once we figure out the region, once we draw the region, then we can actually reverse the order integration more easily. Okay, so let's get started. So here we are starting with x equals y, which is also y equals x. And so um, what happens is that we are going to just get the line that is that goes through the origin and it has this, uh, the slope of one, right? So we can just do that by doing this. Okay. And then now what happens next is that we get x equals pi. And then you may say, what, what is x equals pi? x equals pi is a vertical line at pi. So if we call this to be uh, pi, for example, for, for marks away from the origin, then one, two, three, four, and then we also have the pi here, okay? And so we are going to draw the vertical line here. And so now we get this vertical line, x equals pi. And then now the limits for the y, the limits for the y would be y equals zero, starting from the x-axis to y equals pi, which is up to this point. Yeah, so we actually just need to just draw one more line right here. And then we have the region bounded by those two, three line segments right here. Then we get a triangular region, okay? And then right now what happens is that we want to uh, label each of those line segments. So this one would be uh, y equals x or x equals y. Okay. And then this one, this one is uh, x equals pi. It's a vertical line, right? And what about this one? This one is horizontal. So y equals zero. So now we have this region. And we are actually ready to rewrite the integral in a different order. So we are going to write it as the integral and then another integral here. And so because we started with the x, right? So we are going to add the y here. Now, then you may say, well, actually, I shouldn't put the zero here. So um, what happens is that for the integrand, it doesn't really change. So we can just simply just copy down the integrand. And then we are going to integrate with respect to y first and then x. Okay, so as you can see that for the outer integral, we are going to just put x equals x equals here. And then we fill in those answers. Now, how do we fill them in? Uh, let's look at the region here. This time, as you can see that we are actually looking at the limits for the y. So we are going to just draw the arrows from bottom to top. And this is what happens based on the arrows. You can see that the lower bound would be this y equals zero right here, right? So we can actually just write y equals zero. So that's our lower bound. And then the upper bound is when we hit this line segment right here, which is y equals x or x equals y, but because we want the limit for the y, right? So we actually got to use this y equals x here. Yeah, so it's this one, y equals x. So we get y equals x right here. And then now what about uh, the outer integral limits? Well, this one, they are um, constant. So we can just go from the leftmost point and the rightmost point for this region. The leftmost point is actually just at x equals zero. So we're just going to get zero here. And then the rightmost point is actually, well, there are a lot of points. And as you can see, that is what it's, it's at pi, right? So x is at pi, so we can get x equals pi. So we now have the whole integral set up.
And what we want to do right now is that we can start doing the integration. And as you can see, we can actually just rewrite this integral so that we can have zero to pi and then the integral from zero to x. And then we have sine of x over x and then dy and then dx. Yeah, so right now what happens is that when we do the integration, we are going to integrate with respect to y. So there is no y here. And so that means it's actually quite easy. We will just treat that sine x over x as a constant. So we are going to simply just get the y there, right? So we are going to just get the y. And then we are going to get what times sine of x over x and then evaluate it from zero to zero to x. And then there was still the dx on the outside, as you can see. Okay, and then now what happens is that we are going to plug the x in here, plug the zero in here, and then uh, we don't need to touch the sine x over x. So we are going to get the integral from zero to pi, then plug the x in here. So what do we get? We are just going to get the x, and then times sine x over x minus, and then now we plug in the zero, so we are going to plug in the zero, times sine x over x, and then there was the dx here, so just leave it, okay? And as you can see, this zero times anything is zero, so we can cross that one out. And so we're just left with this, but you can see that there is an X here, there is an X here, we can cancel them. And after canceling them, what happens? We are just going to get the sine X right here. So we are going to just get the integral from zero to pi, and then we are having a uh, sine of X and then DX right here. And then, so now you may say, how do we integrate this one? Well, it's easy. So we integrate the sine X, which will give us the um, negative cosine x and evaluate from zero to pi. So here we are going to plug the pi first. We get uh, negative cosine of pi, right? And then minus, and then we plug in the zero. So we get negative cosine of zero. Then we do the calculation. What is cosine pi? Cosine pi is negative one. So we are going to get negative coming from here and then cosine pi is negative one. So let's write it down. So this is negative one. And you can see the double negative signs right here. So we get negative one. And then there was a minus sign here. So so many minus signs. So we gotta be really careful. Well, minus sign, minus sign. So we get the plus. And then, um, so we get what? Cosine of zero, cosine of zero is what? Cosine of zero is one, as you can see. So we are going to just get the one here. Now, just to check the signs one more time, there was a minus here, minus here. So you can get the minus from here. And then there was the minus one, right? And then minus, minus, we get the plus. And then this is unaffected by those two minus signs. So we just get the one right here. And so now what do we get here? This is what minus minus one, we get one plus one. So what is the final answer? We just get two as the final answer. Yeah, so that's it for this problem. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.